Grace, mercy, and peace be on you from God, our Father, and Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Today you are destined for greatness. When I tell you that, what do you think about when I say you are destined for greatness? Well, I think in our current set of world today, we are destined for greatness. We think about that, we talk about our youth and, and those things we take a look at. They're the greatest, going to be the greatest athlete. Maybe they're going to be in the Major League Baseball or NFL or NHL or better yet, even the Olympics. They're going to be the next greatest athlete. It starts even way back down as a youth, as a young four-year-old, as they're going to all these different camps for the different sports that you go to. And they're going to be the next greatness, the next Wayne Gretzky or even Michael Jordan or, yes, even Tom Brady. But we have in our minds that we're going to make them into this, the next great thing. Spend lots and lots of money, many, many, many hours going to camps and going to private tutors or private trainers just so our kid can be the next great thing. How crazy is that that we talk about that? How crazy is that that even this whole holiday season you can't turn on the TV without seeing a bowl game going on? We are so consumed with this that we have to see the next great thing we have to be the next great thing. Well, maybe athletics isn't your thing. Let's go to the flip side of that. Maybe let's go academics, where you're going to be the next president or maybe CEO or maybe even the next senator or congressperson, congresswoman or congressman or a doctor. You're destined for greatness. And all takes a look at, we take a look at our heritage, if you will. You can see the lineage of great athletes go by. You can see the lineage of great smart people in this world. And we consume ourselves with college prep stuff. Going to private tutoring again. Taking all of these pre-SAT and ACT tests so you can get the best score out there. Maybe even taking all your AP courses in high school or college prep courses in high school so that you become so stressed out that you can't even function. And that's not even just the academic side. What about on the sports side as well? We put so much pressure on being the next great thing that we lose focus on what the great, next great thing is and how we are destined for greatness. I know for as a parent, sometimes you take a look at your kids and say, you know what, you are destined for greatness. You're going to be great at what you do. But I think we lose focus on what that greatness is. All of that stuff that we've talked about is about what I do on this earth. What you do on this earth to be better. Look at my titles. Look at what boards I'm on. Look at me. I am the next great thing. Don't you know who I think I am? These are all things that are very, very, very common in our day today, in our lives today. But I think that as we do this, I think we lose focus of what it is. And, and actually, you know, if we take a look at this, Isaiah has it right. Isaiah, the great prophet in the Old Testament, he says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul will exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and has covered me with a robe of righteousness. Isaiah, the great prophet, could have said, 
look at me, look at me, look at me. But yet he says, no. God has clothed me with salvation and righteousness. With salvation, being free of my sins and being set right with God. Isaiah got it right. Isaiah says, it is not about me, but it is about what God has done for me. It's what God does for us. And all that he does. Isaiah points to the Christ child being born. He points to us being a member of the royal family. He points to our salvation. And that we are called great in the eyes of the Lord. We even see it today in our, our New Testament lesson as we have Simeon who is an old man who the Holy Spirit comes upon him and says, you will not die until you have seen the Lord's Christ. Since you have seen, when you see this promised Messiah, you will not depart from this earth. And Mary and Joseph, on their journey in life, do what's told of them by the law of the Lord, and, and they bring their firstborn to the temple to be given to the Lord, to be purified. And they bring their two turtle doves or their, their pigeons, and they donate them, or they, they give them in, as an offering. And Simeon says, Lord, now let your servant depart in peace according to your word, for mine eyes have seen your salvation. They have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. We hear this every third Sunday that we have communion when we have divine service setting three at the Nunc Dimenis. We sing it after we have partaken in the Lord's Supper. Lord, let your servant depart in peace. Mine eyes have seen the salvation and reveal the light to the Gentiles. Not just the Jews, but to all people. Simeon gets it. Simeon knows by the Holy Spirit that what he has seen and what he experiences is greatness. He holds the baby, Jesus, in his hands. And he thanks God for what he's done. But the thing is, it's not done. Because Simeon also says to Mary, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign that is opposed. Simeon knows the trouble that this baby will bring to those who don't believe. Simeon knows what is to happen. Simeon is pointing to the cross. Simeon is pointing to the fall of those who are in sin and the rising of those who believe in him, in Jesus. He's pointing to Jesus on the cross to die for all sins and for the rising of those who believe in him and come to faith through the work of of the Holy Spirit. But in that message, it also isn't just about Jesus, but it also points to Mary, and it says, and a sword will pierce through your own soul, Mary, so that the thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. You see, Simeon tells Mary that he, her heart will break as well. But in that, though, the hearts, the things that thinks about the hearts from may be revealed. As we talk about what's in our hearts, we proclaim what is in our hearts, right? We cannot proclaim that Christ is Lord unless we believe it in our hearts. What Simeon is saying is that what is in our hearts will be spewed out, while what's in our hearts will be given up to God. And there will be overturning of people. People will come to faith, the work of the Holy Spirit. 
And as we take a look at us being great and being destined for greatness, we, we keep this in mind as how are we with greatness? Well, because in our gospel, our, our epistle lesson today, when Paul writes the letter to Galatians, he says, and because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son to our hearts crying, Abba, Father. You see, we're called into God's family. Isaiah identified a way from back from the beginning. He says, I will be rolled with salvation and righteousness. And Simeon sees it and says, Behold, now let your servant depart in peace, for my eye have seen the salvation. The one who's promised Christ dying on the cross for us, dying on the cross for you, Dying on the cross for me so that we might have eternal life and being called by the Holy Spirit into our baptism, into the family of God. So we're no longer slaves of sin, but we are heirs to the kingdom. We are sons and daughters. And we get to cry out, Daddy! Yes, Abba, Father, Daddy. What a relationship that is, isn't it? Not only that, we're no longer those slaves, but we are a son. And if a son, then we're an heir through God. We are given the inheritance of eternal life through Jesus Christ. Death on the cross for us. Even though we don't deserve it, he still gives it to us. And so, yes, we really are destined for greatness when we think about it. it. May not be destined for greatness on this earth of in our sports or academics or our brain work or our work or what all that stuff. We may not be destined for greatness there, but we are destined for greatness in the greatest thing on earth and all creation because we are called God's sons and daughters. We are destined for greatness because of not what we have done, but what Christ has done for us. And that is his death on the cross for us, his resurrection from the grave for us, his ascension into heaven for us. We're waiting for his return. And in that time, then, we get to be those heirs, those sons of the living God. And we get to go out and share his message with others. We get to tell others that they are destined for greatness as well. And what an awesome thing that is. So as you leave today, I want you to feel good about this. This is a good thing. Knowing that God knows your name. That God has called you his. That you are a son and daughter of the king. And you are destined for greatness. Amen? Amen. Amen.